right, everyone, welcome back. Our next talk is Fuzzing the Fuzzing the TCP IP Stack with Ilya. Please give him a warm round of applause. Ooh. Great. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, as it was just mentioned, I will be talking about uh, fuzzing the TCP stack, going beyond the trivial. Um, just a fair warning, and I'll get into this a bit later. This is a very, very early pre-alpha version. Uh, there is more to come, uh, but I have some things to uh, talk about and report, and uh, hope, hoping to maybe move to the kind of current state of this a bit further. Um, right, so who am I? Um, my name is Ilya. Um, I have been coming to the CC Congress since 18C3, uh, which is really not a way of saying I'm old and decrepit. Um, uh, I've, in, the, in, in a handful of those times, I've also uh, spoke here before. I spoke on some issues with clearing memory, which I called MEMSAD. I spoke on some X11 things about a decade ago. I spoke on some Windows stuff. Uh, I did a general fuzzing talk about 15, 16 years ago, and there were a few others that I can't really remember because I'm old and my memory sucks. Um, but uh, what's really cool is it's, it's really, really glad, I'm really glad to be back here after uh, four years. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. Um, it was almost, almost going to happen last year, and then I guess something happened. It, it didn't. Um, but hey, here we are. Uh, all good again. Hopefully, we, hopefully, you know, we won't have to wait another three or four years for the next one. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the next one already. Um, even though I guess we we're only halfway through. Um, but yeah, that's kind of who I am. Um, yeah, I mean, I also I work at a company called IOActive. We do computer security. I do code review and pen test and fuzzing and all those kinds of things. You know, I'm a security kind of consultant slash engineer. Um, right, so uh, what am I going to talk about? Um, basically, um, I'll have a slide kind of talking about the audience that might be interested in here, but if you're here, you probably only know who you are. Um, and then I'll kind of go into a little bit of the history of uh, doing TCIP stack fuzzing and this like low-level network fuzzing um, and kind of where the state is today uh, and then kind of move on to uh, where I see it going, what, I'm, what I will be the crux of what I'll be presenting, and then sort of the, how do we go beyond that? Um, and then the, the kind of middle part of my talk is kind of the, where I'm at, so uh, sort of how I want to do some, kind, or how I envision doing sort of the quote unquote next level, whatever that means, um, of uh, TCIP stack fuzzing, you know, and I'll talk about kind of what I want to fuzz and how I want to fuzz it, and I'll talk about the setup, and I'll talk about uh, certain modifications I made to uh, network stacks to try to make this happen. Uh, I'll uh, show how to get all this thing set up and how to kind of um, the usage of the stuff I've been, uh, that I kind of built. And then um, I'll do a small demo um, and then after that, uh, if anybody's still in the room, um, I'll take questions. Um, right, so the audience, I mean, you know who you are, but uh, if it isn't clear, if, you're, if you like fuzzing, this might be interesting. If you're a network geek, this might be interesting. If you're an operating systems guy, um, this might be interesting. Uh, if you like technology, you might like this. If any, any kind of sort of security, network, OS, fuzzing, um, then this may be for you. Uh, but even if you don't fall in that category, you might still find this interesting. Um, right, so let's, let's get into kind of the history of things, right? Um, so I'm obviously you know, not the very first guy to go, hey, you know, we have these TCP IP stacks, and they take network packets, and they parse bits and bytes, and they handle state. Isn't that interesting? Surely that's a tax surface, right? In fact, um, you know, you go back to the 90s and probably before that, but you know, I wasn't around before that. So um, if you look at kind of the, the state of network stack bugs in the 90s, it was so, sort of very trivial stuff. For those who were around, um, you might remember like WinNuke, and we had things like sin floods and Ping of Dead and um, you know, Smurf and Land and Teardrop and Bonk and 
all these mutations and boink and what have you. Um, uh, and and I, I wouldn't say they were really a result of fuzzing, but they definitely were some kind of result of some kind of runtime testing. Um, I think at this time, very few people were actually doing any kind of targeted code review or fuzzing, um, but people were at least, you know, people observed certain bugs in the network stack and um, observed that they could write tools and exploits to um, use them mostly for things like denial of service. Um, but that's kind of where this starts, sort of mid-90s-ish, with these kind of trivial tools. Um, none of this should work today, um, but that's, that's kind of the, the, where, where we, the history starts of this. Um, and then we kind of get into the late 90s and the 2000s. And, um, you know, we had better, we had some libraries like uh, LibNet and things like that. And uh, somebody wrote this tool called um, ISIC, uh, the IP stack integrity checker. Um, and ISIC is really, really cool. Um, somehow it's one of these tools that not many people, everybody should know about them, but you know, I, when I talk to people, oftentimes they'll be like, what is this thing? And then you go download this thing that's 20, 25 years old, and you run it against network stack, and um, sometimes bugs come out. Um, it was extremely successful back in its day. Um, it, it would break Windows up to Windows 7. There was some nasty bug in the UDP handler. Um, it's broken the Linux TCP stack several times. Uh, I mean, they twiddle with their stack often, so sometimes stuff breaks and they fix it, and then two years later, it breaks again with something else, and so on and so on. Um, it's definitely broken the NetBSD TCP stack. Um, the top three I know because I, I hit those bugs too, and then kind of the bottom ones, the like checkpoint firewall and the gauntlet firewall and the Raptor and so on. Uh, I didn't, I never observed any of that because I don't have access to that hardware, and of course. Uh, that hardware. I mean, this is this is basically from their trophies file, which is from the late 90s, um, and so this, these these are kind of products of that time. Um, but like dot dot dot, because this this stuff, this thing really used to break everything, um, and on occasion it still breaks stuff, right? Um, and uh, the the way ISIC really works is it understands the structure of an IP packet and the structure of a UDP packet and a TCP packet and an ICMP packet and an Ethernet frame. Um, and it just, you know, bit bangs around and has some options to go, hey, do you want to fiddle with these flags or TCP flags or do you want to fiddle with uh, IP options or TCP options and, or do you want to mess with a checksum? And then it just uh, keeps this one buffer and then has this loop and it um, just keeps changing a few bits and keeps firing these things off. The speed of ISIC is really pretty bad, uh, pretty insane. Like it's, it's fast, um, but um, it, it's, it's limited, right? It, it can only, it doesn't understand any kind of state. Uh, and so it, while it finds a certain amount of bugs, there is beyond a certain point, it just it can't get beyond that. It can't find those bugs, right? Um, but even so, that's, this, is, this is kind of where we've been stuck for 20 years, right? That's, this was kind of why I wanted to do this presentation. Um, you, since, you know, you can use Scappy and do similar things with Scappy, um, the reason I like it and still like it today is because uh, it's, it's, um, it's very simple C code and it's just blazingly fast. Um, anyway, how do we go beyond this trivial state? We've been stuck here for 20-something years. Uh, it's time to move on, right? Um, as I mentioned before, uh, it turns out um, TCP, which sits on top of IP, and some other things, um, has state. Uh, and um, there are, and you can ask network engineers and uh, people that build these network stacks and so on, there are bugs that sit behind these state that if you just throw packets at it without ever getting into the state, you will never hit these kind of bugs, right? Um, you can't, so you, you just can't get there with crafting pack, simple packets. You need to like complete your three-way handshake and like set up like uh, the right extensions and the right flags and like I send you this and you send me this and I send you this other thing and you send me this thing and all of a sudden you get into this weird state where maybe some bug happens, right? Um, but that's pretty deep. <laughs> That's pretty deep into like your network protocol. If you're just banging out some bits, um, you never get there, right? Um, 
And so um, getting to this point and trying to fuzz beyond that, uh, this is hard and it takes a lot of time. Um, as I said, the state really hasn't advanced much beyond this. Um, there's been some research the last couple of years because I kind of Googled around for these things. And so there's this NVIDIA 33, um, and then there's this academic paper, TCP Fuzz, uh, where they kind of use this uh, network stress slash test tool by uh, Google, which isn't really a fuzzer, but you can kind of coax it into like becoming a fuzzer-ish called Packet Driller. Um, and so they found some interesting things with that. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of circle back to these things a bit later. Um, so, uh, of course, you know, with, with uh, the enormous success in the last decade and change of things like AFL and AFL Plus, the first thought is, aha, let, let's, let's use coverage-guided fuzzing, fantastic. Let's do that. Um, and that would be great. Um, it turns out it's not that simple. Um, there, there have been attempts, and in principle, yes, you want to do coverage-guided fuzzing. Um, it's not easy. Um, there are some problems, right? So, first of all, AFL and AFL++ work incredibly well when, A, you have a file where really all of your state is maintained in a file, or you have a very simple API where you go, here's, a, here's data and here's a length and go parse, right? Um, it, is, it works exceptionally well for those situations, and um, a lot of attack surfaces like that. Um, a network stack doesn't quite work like that, right? Um, it's, not, it's not a file, it's, it's a protocol, which means there's things that get to state that doesn't, isn't like one bit inside of a packet, right? So it's, 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 a, it's this weird thing that you, is like encoded in a series of things. It isn't like represented by one bit or one byte or like a length field or something like that. Um, that's one. The other one is um, packet queues. Um, what I mean by packet queues is basically, uh, so if you, like, let's say if you have a network, uh, you have a file parser, usually you have like file parse function and you have a length and a pointer and it parses the thing and it returns and it does something. Um, when you do a network stack, because it is so tightly integrated into the bowels of your operating system, um, it, it uh, like a, what happens is uh, a packet comes in and the NIC kind of sees it and it triggers an interrupt and the interrupt handler kicks in and goes great and it kind of takes it from the interrupt queue and then it looks at it and it goes, oh, this is Ethernet. I'm going to put this in the Ethernet queue and then at some point your Ethernet handler wakes up and it goes, oh, great, I'm taking it out of this queue and it goes, oh, this is IP, great. I'm going to put this on the IP queue and it goes back to something else. The IP queue at some point wakes up takes this thing off the queue and goes, oh yeah, great, this is IP so-and-so, oh, it's TCP, yes, yeah, I have an open TCP port, great. I'm gonna go put this on the TCP queue, and then the TCP queue at some point, you know, uh, TCP thread wakes up, takes it from the TCP queue and goes, yes, I know this guy, I've been talking to this guy, I have a userland service that's running, I'm gonna take this thing and give it to the userland guy, and the userland guy just called receive, and receive now return, and, and so it's, you, have a, a, you have a bunch of these steps, um, and and it's, this, it's, they're not, it's not linear, it's not one, two, three, it's one guy and then somebody else, and then somebody else, and then somebody else. Um, and um, while you can instrument that, it's not quite as simple, right? Um, as I mentioned, the, the other one uh, is, issue is, is uh, the, the state can easily be captured in, in any kind of file or, or, or set of data. Um, it's really like a, a sequence of things. Um, so that, that's where things get problematic. Um, and, and there are people that have, you know, discussions and people have tried. Um, and uh, um, someone said, hey, you know, we actually tried with AFL and we got somewhere, but they said, you know, we ran into problems, which is exactly what I was just talking about. Um, the, the queues, the asynchronous, the asynchronicity of it all makes it very difficult. Uh, it, it doesn't mean you can't do coverage guide fuzzing, uh, but it means it requires an extra set of work beyond what we've done before. Um, and so, um, I, I mean, I, my opinion is we have to work towards getting this, um, but we are very far away from it. Uh, getting that done in any kind of 
way that is reproducible and easy to set up. Um, doing like a, a, a one-off where it works for one guy and then um, getting to some level of fuzzing, that's what this, this guy is describing, right? But getting that to any kind of level where we can repro that and, and make it, you know, not make your life miserable when you try to set it up, nowhere close to that. Um, so as I said, this is, that this is why, like, it, 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 the state, fuzzing CCP state is just hard and time consuming. Um, and I'm definitely not here to talk about coverage guide fuzzing. I just wanted to kind of see where we're going. Um, I'm, basically, I'm, I'm very, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, uh, you know, I write code, I do, you know, I'm lazy, right? So, um, and the thought I had is instead of doing that, uh, what we really want is I want to have my own network stack that I can fiddle with and then talk to somebody else's network stack and okay, basically, you know, modify this network stack so that it adds fuzzing. And because the network stack's already there, I get all the state for free because the stack is doing that. Um, but as I said, I am lazy. There's no way I'm building my own network stack. Um, but the good news is I don't have to, right? Um, if this was 10, 15, 20 years ago, um, you, you would have been out of luck and you would have had to do that. Um, but today, it turns out, we have a number of user land TCPIP stacks, right? Um, and uh, they, they're often used for like in embedded stuff or to test certain things. Uh, somebody wrote a port scanner with it, like you can do all sorts of things with it. Uh, but somehow, as far as I can tell, no one's ever looked at it and said, great, let's go co-opt one of these network stacks and turn them into a fuzzer. Um, and that was kind of the idea I had. That's kind of the crux of this presentation. Um, and so um, one of the things I did is uh, looked around and said, okay, what's, what's out there, right? And it turns out there's quite a few. Um, there's libuynet, which is a port of the BSD network stack to user land. Um, it's fairly old. It hasn't been touched in eight years. I have no idea what its current state is. Um, I, I just looked at it, the, the, the timestamp and I was like, ah, this, I don't want to mess with this. Uh, it might just be too painful. Uh, there's PyTCP, which is a fully functioning network stack in Python. Um, I considered using that. It was a bit too painful for what I had in mind. It, it does, like it comes with its own uh, like DHCP server and things like that. And that's, that's too much. I, I don't want that. I just want the network stack. Um, so uh, there's a few others. Um, I looked at NetStack, which is, uh, Google made this as part of their GVisor um, product offering, whatever. Um, and um, it, it, NetStack used to be a separate thing, uh, and then it somehow got moved into GVisor, um, like the repo, um, and trying to separate one from the other. I'm sure there's a way to do it. I tried, um, couldn't quite get there. I didn't spend much time on it, but I'd say couldn't get it done within an hour, and that was kind of like, okay, you're out. I need something easier. Um, there's LWIP, which I know is used in a few places. Um, there's small TCP, which is uh, a TCP, user land TCP stack entirely written in Rust, which is very exciting. Um, Pico TCP, UIP, there's a bunch of others. Um, I settled on Pico TCP, and I'll talk about that in, in a minute. <clears throat> Um, before I get to like the actual implementation and kind of testing I did, um, what do we actually want to fuzz? Um, this, this isn't really a hard question, but you know we, we, sh we should determine this before we actually set out to, to fuzz this thing, right? Um, so yes, the idea is we take a user line TCPIP stack, we modify it um, to fuzz the right things, we get the state for free because the TCPIP stack already does that. Uh, but what do we then want to fuzz, right? And the answer then is, okay, let, let, let's go look at the protocols and see what's there and where we know their state and where we know things go wrong and where we know things have gone wrong in the past, right? Basically, stuff where there's complexity, right? Um, and if you're looking at, for example, TCP, like obviously your flags, they tend to signal uh, things and cause transitions in states. Uh, you know, obviously a SYN or a SYNAC or... Um, that those kind of things tend to cause transitions in state. Um, window sizes are interesting. They've definitely, it, it, they, they're kind of subtle, they seem trivial, uh, but they've caused problems in the past, so messing with window sizes is a great idea. Um, checksums shouldn't be a problem, uh, but I have seen problems where checksum functions will read out a bound by one or two bytes. 
So on occasion, checksums are a problem. Um, obviously, the size of packets is interesting, right? If, um, you know, what happens if you get a zero-sized packet, right? Is that even legal? Um, spoiler, it turns out for UDP it is legal, for TCP it is not. Um, uh, what if you send really large packets? What if they're larger than the MTU? What if you use jumbo frames and so on? Some of this triggers fragmentation, some of it doesn't. Um, and obviously, the obvious one is length fields, right? Can we mess with length fields? Um, and then, obviously, fragmentation is uh, interesting, right? We know there have been plenty of bugs with fragmentation in the past. We know there's going to be bugs in the future with fragmentation. So that's, that's definitely something you, you would want to fuzz. Um, and you get into all sorts of, is it too big or too small or too many or not enough or out of order or some stuff timed out or some duplicates or you set a don't fragment flag but you fragment anyway. You know, you get all of these weird uh, fragmentation things. Um, and then sort of lastly, uh, is you know options, right? So IPv4 options, TCP options, IPv6 extension headers, right? Um, insertion, truncation, removal, out of order, any of combination of these could be interesting, could lead to some kind of issues um, in state or parser or a combination of both. Um, so that's stuff that we would want to fuzz. <coughs> um, so as this, all of these may or may not relate to state. Um, I, I care in the sense that I want to get to state, but I also don't really care in the sense that, because um, I already have a, a user line TCP stack, it does the state for me, so I just kind of piggyback off of that. Um, and then, of course, you can just build on upon it, right? It's like, okay, well, what about ICMP? What about SCTP? What about IDMP and so on? Um, for SCTP, it's like, okay, Pico TCP doesn't support it. I wanted to use UINet, but I never got that far. So um, ultimately, I want to get there, but um, not, not even close to it. Um, SATP, by the way, is one of these weird things where, like, if you're a network nerd, you've probably heard of it, but you've never seen it because nobody, nobody uses SCTP except when you get to the telco world, and then everybody uses SCTP, right? So it's one of these really large niches, uh, but outside of that, nobody, nobody really uses it. Um, Right, so that's kind of, okay, when I want to fuzz and how I want to fuzz, uh, let's, let, let's talk practical things, because I did, I kind of built this fuzzer, right, and it does this thing. Um, so how does that work, right? So, well, the first thing you do is, as I said, you pick one. So I, I, I chose Pico TCP, uh, and I'll get in, into that in a moment. Um, the, your steps for setup are relatively easy. Um, essentially, you set up a ton tap interface, you play around with like a bridge and like add if and brctl and so on. Um, and then you need something to drive traffic. And so what I did is I created a simple echo service and an echo client. And that obviously you do that in a loop and it kind of ends up driving traffic till the end of time, which is great because now I can just hook into the network stack and, and start messing with things. Um, and because the, the, you know, the echo client server just keeps sending data back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, it'll just, that just drives fuzzing, right? Um, and then the last step in the setup is, yes, you need to modify your TCP IP stack and add fuzzing to normal traffic. Um, so, yeah, as I said, um, I used Pico TCP, and here's why. Um, I, so I evaluated a bunch of these things. Uh, initially, I wanted to go for, with, with Pi TCP. Um, I, it, I just didn't, it was a little bit too hairy for what I wanted to do, uh, but it, 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 it does work. Um, I was like, okay, P2CP looks great. Um, I used to write a ton of C code. I haven't touched much C in the last couple of years, um, but it was nice because I, got an, I now have an excuse to write some C code, uh, and Pico TCP is, um, it, it, it's pretty simple C code. It's not very complicated. Uh, it's easy to get started with it. It's easy to integrate into, uh, into your own user land program. It's easy to read the code. It is easy to modify, and best of all, it's open source and free software. It's entirely GPL'd. Um, so that means I can do whatever the hell I want with it. Um, sweet. So, um, yeah, I should have put one in, 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 in this slide. But essentially, um, I don't know if you can read the code from how far, but essentially one of the cool things about Pico TCP is that it, um, it comes with very simple, very easy APIs. And so I built a simple echo client uh, using the APIs. 
Um, and so essentially, you, you kind of can go and say, yeah, I want the stack to have this IP, you know, um, I want to, you know, um, create a socket and then go connect with somebody else on, on that socket. Um, and that, that's, that's just, I mean, it, it's, the APIs are really, really simple. Um, sweet. So uh, with that, um, I, uh, I'll do a demo. Uh, I'll, I'll say this, though, <laughs> lower expectations. Um, I, uh, I didn't quite get as far as I wanted to. The, the fuzzer works. Uh, just barely, though, but it works. Um, I didn't implement everything I wanted to implement. Um, there's lots of to-dos. Um, the fragmentation, for example, I, I'm not there yet. Um, in terms of trophies, not really any significant crashes yet. I did find a minor denial service in like the Minix 3 network stack where if I'm throwing packets at it, something else at some point can't connect to it until you kind of stop throwing packets at it. Um, I don't know if that's really a state thing. That may just be that the stack is so slow it can't keep up. Uh, even though I'm not throwing packets at it that fast. Um, but yeah, let me, let me do a little demo. Um, sweet. So here I have an OpenBSD machine, which is running my Echo Daemon. Uh, and here I have my, uh, my fuzzer. This runs, uh, on, yeah, a Linux machine. Uh, so this is this one is one one eight two one sixty eight point eleven dot I think one thirty one or one thirty, and then the OpenBSD machine is one thirty two, um, and so I'll, you'll see traffic here in a second, and uh, should have yeah sweet okay so kind of drive traffic from here, and it goes like, yeah, yeah, I'm fuzzing, I'm fuzzing, I'm fuzzing, I'm fuzzing. And then uh, Wizzy goes, yeah, I see your packets, and you're kind of fuzzing, and like, echoing some things, but it's dropping a lot because there's all sorts of things it doesn't like. Um, and then, like, if you go through this stuff, there's, you'll see a whole bunch of, like, retransmissions and, like, some broken packets and all sorts of things. Um, like, it's, it's, it's not... It's, it's good enough that um, packets get through and get processed and make it past the three-way handshake and they get echoed back. It's broken enough that a lot of this stuff doesn't get through and gets stuck somewhere. And my hope is somewhere in there it, it will find bugs. Um, uh, this code started working <laughs> this morning at about 6 a.m. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Um, the, the downside is I, I, I'd hope to find a bug or two, uh, not yet, uh, which is kind of annoying. Uh, but uh, this, this, this is about as far as, as, I, as I go with that. Um, so yeah, it's, based, it's a pre-alpha version. There's work to be done. Uh, as I said, it works, but just barely. Uh, as I said, I can force packets through the stack, do the three-way handshake, uh, and sometimes the, the echo service even acknowledges and sends it back to me, which is great. Um, sometimes my echo client crashes, and that's why I have a bash loop around it. Um, as I said, it, it's, 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 it's ugly, but it works. Um, and and I, as I said, I haven't implemented fragmentation yet. Um, so lots of work to be done. The code is incredibly ugly, um, but given, and, and I wanted to get further than I did today, um, but it does work um, somewhat. Um, and I put it on, 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 uh, on GitHub, so if you wanna, if you wanna play around with it, you can. Uh, ex expect updates in the next couple of days and weeks. Uh, I hope to get this in a much better state. Um, it is really ugly, by the way. Um, and um, it, currently, I don't actually have a full Pico TCP code in there. I just took a diff, and the diff is kind of screwed up, so I do need to fix it. Um, but everything, if you really want to get working, everything is there. Uh, but I'll, in the next couple of days, I will clean it up and make it easier to work with. Um, but if you want to get going to, like, right now, it's going to take you some effort, uh, but it's there. Um, but if you hold on for a few more days, maybe a week, um, I, I will make sure it works. It's, it'll be easier. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm kind of out of time, but last thing I kind of wanted to uh, talk about is um, why stop at one fuzzer? Right? One of the really cool things I like about AFL++ is its integration with other fuzzers. And I think that's 
something we should start doing in everything we fuzz. It's like, why stop at one fuzzer? If there's something else, find a way to make them work together, to cooperate and collaborate and so on. So on. Uh, I mentioned a uh, package ruler before, like you could definitely get some package ruler in there. Uh, why not throw some Mystic in there? Um, there's the IPv6 toolkit, there's a few others. Um, so I'd say, don't just stop with one fuzzer, combine a bunch of things. Uh, yeah, talk about some previous research. Um, yeah, as for conclusion, I don't really have much of a conclusion except for <laughs> I, uh, I should have started this earlier and gotten further. Uh, <laughs> um, I, 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 I do have long-term goals and a call to action, right? To, to me, it's clear that um, using user at TCP stack will move the state beyond where we are today with um, just using ISIC, for example, right? Um, ISIC still finds bugs, but you know, it's 25 years old. We, let, let's have a better approach, right? Um, and so I think using, using, using the TCP stack is, seems very promising to me. I think it's a good move forward. Um, it's not the end goal, right? Ultimately, we do want coverage-guided fuzzing. Um, and by, I don't think those are mutually exclusive. In fact, I think both will work well together. Um, as I said, doing this currently is very difficult. Um, I, I'm hoping to you know, find other people that will want to work on this as well. And my, my, my goal here is really just to get things moving and get some ideas going, really. Um, yeah, I guess I'm one minute over time, but that's, that's essentially my presentation. Thank you. All right, we have eight minutes for questions. So if you have any questions, um, please line up at the microphones and we will take them. And if you're on the stream, uh, you can also ask questions on the internet. And someone already did. So please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for the great talk and uh, the great effort and getting it ready for today. Um, one question from the internet here is, um, where do you see, like, what else do you see that, that could be done? Like fuzzing um, ICMP or, or so on is like good user land tools also available here? Just what are general thoughts on the landscape? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, ICMP I think is a good one because I mean that's one of these things where usually um, I see packets generally don't come out of nowhere. They tend to come out of something in the state went wrong. Like you're talking to the TCP thing, and all of a sudden the port closed, and then you get an ICMP going, hey, you know, port closed or something. Um, so that's definitely stuff you can do. Um, to some extent, I have that implemented, in the sense that um, I don't, I don't, I haven't, don't have any code that explicitly evokes ICMP uh, uh, packets, which is something that I think should be added. But I do have code that says, hey, if the network stack generates ICMP messages, I will go fuzz that. So that is implemented. Um, but ICMP is a, really, is a really good one. Um, there's definitely more work to be done there. Um, I mentioned some of these things before. Um, so it's, yeah, um, so definitely IPv6, which I haven't implemented yet. The extensions, I think, is interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, ICMP here, IGMP is another one, STP. I mean, the, 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 um, the opportunities are really boundless and endless, right? So um, I think it's a great question. I don't have the answer to all of them. Um, I think I enumerated some. There's definitely more. Um, it, 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 it would make sense as an exercise to, to really dive deep into kind of every possible thing you can have in, in your state in DCIP stack, explicitly enumerate it, and then go kind of like this goal-oriented approach where you go, have I implemented this? No, how do I do it? Have I implemented this? Have I implemented this? As I said, I kind of ran out of time. Um, I'd like to do this. I haven't done that yet. All right, we take mic number two, please. Hello, thank you. Um, I wasn't quite clear, are you fuzzing Pico TCP? Or are you just using Pico TCP to take care of a bunch of st stuff that you That's are exactly. too lazy to do? That's exactly it. I, I'm not, I mean, you, you can fuzz Pico TCP with this too. It's not what I'm doing, right? I'm using Pico TCP to be my TCP stack, right? That means I don't have to write it. And then what I did is I basically, um, the way Pico TCP works is, is, like it's not a library that, in the sense that like it's on the system. It's a, it's a library in the sense that it's part of your application. I compile it with me. 
And so um, because of that, I can, I, like the, the PicoDB source code is part of my program. So I literally just add hooks in a bunch of places in PicoTCP and go, oh, before you send this out, if it's IP, do IP fuzzing. If it's TCP, do TCP fuzzing. If it's ICMP, do ICMP fuzzing. Uh, add extensions, mutate extensions, that kind of stuff. So you're fuzzing the remote system. No. Correct, yes. All right, thank you. All right. Do we have any further questions in the room? No. Internet, go. Yes. Um, another one. Um, how do you meter kind of like the underlying stacks? How do you look at branch coverage and so on? Are you doing that already? And how are you doing it? Yep. That is a great question. Um, that's coverage guided fuzzing. Um, I am currently not doing that, right? I, I spoke about that a little bit. Um, I, we need to move in that direction. Um, it, it's definitely, I, I think that's the end goal, really. Um, the problem, some of the problems I discussed there is, is that it's not quite as easy um, as it's made out to be. Um, you're, you're dealing with a low-level operating system, so it's not as simple as instrumenting a uh, user-line program. Um, you're dealing with queues instead of uh, files, or like one file parser. Um, so dealing with queues is a pain in the ass. Um, and then you're dealing with state, right? Which means uh, a lot of things don't necessarily encode to one bit or one byte, but it's really a combination of you sent this and then I sent that and then this sent and then so on. And, and this, you seven or eight different things lining up that then causes a state transition, right? Um, and so it's, there's, at least from where I'm standing right now, there's no easy way to do this. Um, I, as I said, we need to go there. Uh, that's the end goal. Um, how we go there, there, there are certain gaps that need to be filled. Were you in yesterday's talk about the QEMO fuzzing? Uh, I, unfortunately, no. Um, I had code to write. <laughs> I think that's a good, good start. All right, mic number three, please. Hi, great talk. Uh, I wanted to ask if it's maybe possible to integrate fuzzing into the Linux kernel itself to fuzz its TCP IP stack. Uh, yes, you can. Um, so when you get to like a net filter, um, there are places there that you can use um, to, to, to fuzz with. Um, I looked into it. It's one of the things I wanted to do. Um, it was on my to-do list once I get done with, you know, where I get with Pico TCP and some other things. Um, and again, it's one of these things, it doesn't have to be one or the other, right? You can combine these things. Um, so that is a great approach. I thought about it. I want to do it. Um, I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, that's 10 steps away from where I'm now. I hope that answers your question. But I, it's, 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 I think it's a great question, and the answer is yes, we, we should do that. All right, thanks. All right, do we have any further questions from the internet? If, yes, we have one, and I think it's, it's very general. Um, so the question here is, um, have you have used, uh, considered using Rust for the fuzzer itself, like um, the hyper HTTP mm -hmm. library or something like this? Yeah, um, so I, did, I mentioned small TCP, so the, the, uh, given that there's a network stack for it, you can use Rust. Um, I haven't, I didn't use that. Um, I, I'm, I'm a, I like Rust, I think it's, it's, it's a, a great programming language. Um, I think it's, uh, at some point, hopefully it'll replace all or most of our C or C++ code. Um, I, I have, many great things to say about Rust. Um, I am not a great Rust developer. I've written a little bit of Rust code, but I, I have a large learning curve. Um, and for that reason and only that reason, I didn't go with Rust or small TCP. Uh, it's just, it's my own limitations. Um, I wish I had known more Rust, uh, but you know, life happens and I, 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 didn't, I haven't had a good opportunity yet to, to write a bunch of Rust code. Uh, someday I hope to get better at writing Rust code and I, I would love to do some of this stuff in Rust, but the only reason I didn't uh, touch anything in Rust here was I wasn't confident I would have gotten anything done in time. All right. Then we will simply end the talk perfectly on time. Thank you very much, Ilya. Sure.